Hi everybody, my name is Josh Haftel and I'm going to be showing you how to make a new profile inside of Adobe Camera Raw. These profiles will work inside of Adobe Camera Raw 10.3 and later, Lightroom Classic 7.3 and later, and Lightroom CC 1.3 and later. But in order to make them, we're going to make them inside of Adobe Camera Raw. That's the only place you can make them. To open up the Adobe Camera Raw though, I'm going to take this raw file, it's a Sony raw file, and I'm going to drag it on top of the Photoshop icon. It's going to open up the Adobe Camera Raw interface. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you all the steps you need to do to make your own profile. Uh, first, let's just take a look at the profiles, uh, make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, that's that new feature. It was launched inside of uh, 10.3 for ACR, 7.3 for Lightroom Classic, and 1.3 for Lightroom CC. And it shows up inside of the basic panel in Adobe Camera Raw. You can see them right here. I've got a little pull-down menu. It shows me uh, the favorite profiles that I have. Uh, if I click on this little icon over here, let me browse them. I can see again all the favorite ones. I can see the uh, raw ones, camera matching ones. I can see all these other ones in here, the creative profiles as we call them. But what I really wanna do is I wanna show you, oops, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button on my mouse. There we go, just rotated around, that's fun. Uh, I'm gonna just show you how to make a profile using the Adobe Camera Raw interface. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on the preset section and I'm gonna use this new preset button. But in order to do that, I'm gonna hold the Alt key on a Windows or Option key on a Macintosh while I'm clicking on this. And you'll see that it opens up this new profile interface. And what this new profile interface does is allows me to create a profile. So let's go through and do this. So what I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna name this. I'm gonna call it like Josh's Crazy Profile V1. And then I'm gonna say, what kind of group do I wanna put it into or, or set? So I'm gonna say, let's, let's create a new set. I'm gonna call it uh, My Profiles. And uh, I'll show you how to change this in, in later. Uh, so you don't have to worry about this in case you, you wanna make a different profile set later on, you can do that. But for the time being, we're just gonna do this. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna say, well, what elements do you wanna include inside of your profile? So kind of like a preset, you can include edits that you've applied to your image using uh, this profile. So any of those edits, like i.e. the basic stuff, which is like exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, etc., cetera, uh, or the parametric curve, point curve, the black and white mix, HSL, split toning, post crop vignetting, all those things in here, you can add them into a profile. Uh, one thing that's different about a profile is that you won't actually see the slider values and you won't be able to modify them. So there's actually something to think about when you're creating a profile versus a preset. Uh, in fact, uh, I still use presets all the time. Uh, I generally apply more creative, advanced type of things with a preset like split toning or uh, some of the uh, graduated effects uh, because once they're inside a profile, you won't be able to modify them, but we'll see that in a bit. But what I'm gonna do is right now, I really wanna focus on one of the unique things that's inside of a profile, which is the ability to use a lookup table or, or a 3D LUT, uh, as some people call them. So to start off, I'm gonna just turn off all of these treatment and elements and edits and everything like that. And let's just go down and talk about the other uh, controls that you have inside of here. So the first one under advanced settings, this is tone map strength. Now, any time that you've used Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw in the past, the tone map strength has been set to what we now call low. And you can see in parentheses it says normal. What this means is you can actually turn it up. So if you want to have more uh, dynamic range compression in your images, meaning that the highlights and the shadows sliders inside of the Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom uh, editing interface, if you want them to do more, meaning that they'll recover more highlights or recover more shadows, you can do that here by setting the tone map strength higher. Um, keep in mind that the more tone mapping that you apply, the more dynamic range compression you apply, sometimes the, the less realistic the image looks. Uh, so for my personal taste, I leave this always on low, although I've talked to some people that really like it higher. So this is one of those places where you can you know, salt to taste. So I'm gonna leave that at, at low. Uh, the next thing is the look table. Now, if you want your profile to work on the widest range of images possible, meaning both raw files and non-raw files, uh, you're gonna wanna turn this off. Uh, the look table refers to the uh, specific color adjustments that are being done behind the scenes on your files, usually on a raw file, and you can reference one of those Adobe created raw files, or even if you're creating your own DCP profiles, you can reference one of those. Uh, but one of the things that you'll notice is that as soon as you start doing that, it actually starts to limit the images you can apply it to, meaning if you uh, re refer to or use this profile based off of a DCP, that means that 
that profile will only work with the images supported by that DCP. So to that end, uh, I usually turn this off because I want to make sure that the profiles that I'm making have the ability to affect the most images possible. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the color lookup table. Now this is where I like to have a lot of fun with my profiles. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to first say uh, color lookup table. And now on my desktop, I've made uh, a lot of folders, so let's just open this up, uh, go into LUTs. Now I've already made this cube file, and a cube file is a format of a 3D lookup table. Uh, it's basically, it's a, a text file that includes a lot of information about how you're going to shift colors from one uh, color to another. Lookup tables are really powerful. They've been used uh, for a long time by folks in the uh, cinema industries as well as inside of Photoshop. Uh, in fact, Photoshop can create LUTs. There's even applications out there that are only designed to create LUTs. Uh, there's a lot of things you might want to research about that. Uh, for now, I'm only going to be focusing on how to use a LUT, not how to create a LUT. So I've already created a LUT, and the goal of this LUT that I created was to take skies and make them teal or uh, turquoise. So I'm going to take this teal sky cube file and we hit load uh, and what you can see here is uh, I created it with this application called 3D LUT Creator. Uh, that's an application that I happen to use quite a bit for making my LUTs, but like I said, you can make them in, in a lot of different things, including Photoshop. Um, now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tell it what space was this LUT created in. Uh, the space that this LUT was created in was in actually Adobe RGB, and that's because that's the space that 3D LUT Creator creates its LUTs inside of. Now, if you're working inside of Photoshop and you've got your color working space settings set to Pro Photo RGB, you'd want to set Pro Photo RGB. But I've set it to uh, Adobe RGB because that's what's being used in my uh, LUT creator. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Gamut. Now, the Gamut, what that's going to do is it's going to say, what do you do with colors in the image that you're applying this profile to that are outside of this space? Now, since Adobe RGB is quite large, it's not really oftentimes you're going to have images or colors that are outside of the Adobe RGB space. Um, but if you do, um, what do you do with them? So clipping means basically do nothing with them or, or basically don't affect those, uh, those pixels. Or if you say extend, the idea would be try and guess or interpolate how that color outside of Adobe RGB should be affected. And so you, you can decide and you can experiment with these uh, elements and it depends entirely on the LUT that you've created, the effect that you're going to be applied, the kind of images that you're working with, a lot of different things inside of here. It gets quite, exp uh, <laughs> it, it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. Um, an easy rule of thumb is the extend is just going to be uh, safer. Um, but sometimes if you want to be more precise, you want to use clip. Uh, this kind of sounds like and is familiar to you if you've ever printed uh, and you have the rendering intent, same idea. What do you do with those colors that are outside of the space? Uh, again, lots of different options inside of there. But for me, what I found is uh, I oftentimes put this to extend. Now, the next part of it also is pretty complicated uh, to explain. I I've tried a few times. Uh, and... Let's try again and let's see if it works. And, and of course, FYI, VTW, a lot of this information, in fact, all this information is also in an SDK that we launched. It'll be in the comments of the YouTube page uh, for this video so that you can access it and reference it. But uh, let's just try going through this verbally. So what this is going to do is because I'm creating a creative profile, which means I'll have an amount slider, which means I can dial up or dial down the effect that I'm creating, I can actually indicate what the minimum normal and maximum effect is going to be. Now, the lookup table that I've created, this one over here, is set to 100%, meaning like when I have the effect applied and I open up the profile, that slider is going to be in the center of the image. And what's going to happen then is, uh, I'm sorry, the center of the amount slider, it's going to apply 100% of that lookup table. So that's going to be what you get. Uh, if you want to do that applied at a higher rate or a lower rate at the starting point, this is how you adjust it. So the minimum means when the slider is all the way to the left, what do you do? Now in this case, 0%, so it means it will apply nothing. So if I uh, apply the profile and then I take the amount slider, I move it all the way to the left, that means I'm gonna get none of that effect. Now if I uh, move it all the way to the right, it's gonna do 200%, and you might ask, well, what does 200% mean if the lookup table is creating at 100%? And this is a great question. And this is where things get a little complicated. So the idea is that the maximum of 200% is in essence going to take the effect that's being applied and, and assume or simulate or interpolate 
how to create more of that effect. So in this case, my LUT is creating and taking this cyan color of skies, and it then is going to make it more turquoise. So it's going to shift the hues towards turquoise. And so at 100%, it's going to make the skies turquoise. At 200%, it's going to do that times two. So taking those colors and shifting them towards that turquoise effect and going even deeper into that. So more, even more greens uh, in essence is what's going to happen when you move this over to 200%. Now, if you want to pull that back, or if you want to do less of that, no problem. You can just put that in right here. So we'll just go in and say, oh, maybe the maximum is going to be 150%. Uh, the amount I'm going to do 75%. And I found actually 0, 75, 150 is actually really great uh, for me and, and the profiles that, that I create. So again, this is another one of those, uh, your mileage may vary, salt to taste, et cetera, et cetera, however you like to do that. But here's something that I, I recommend that you just play around with. So now that I've done this, I can just click OK. So now I've just created a profile. Now if I go over to the basic section and I click on the browse profiles and I scroll down, you see I've got now this Josh's crazy profile V1 effect. And you can see that if I roll off of it or roll onto it, you can see the effect is being applied. It's, it's got that turquoise sky effect. Now if I scroll this amount slider down, you see that it's going off, unless if I move it to the right, you can see how I was mentioning that it's going even more green. As I was mentioning, it's it's creating a quite the green effect, and that's because it's going to 150% of that turquoise sky effect, which is basically taking blues and making them more green. So going beyond that starting point or that 100% that I created, it's going to make them really green. So that's it's fun, it's interesting, and it gives you a chance to be able to adjust and play around with and, and give either yourself or if you're making these to sell to other people, your, your customers, more uh, control and more decisions in that process. But now I can basically go in here and I can see what that effect is doing. And I think it's great, it looks good, I, I'm happy with that. But let me show you a couple other things that are important to know when you're going through and creating these profiles. So now I'm gonna go right down here to the profile and I'm gonna right click on it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, say click on the rename profile. But again, before I click on rename profile, I'm going to hold the alt or option key down. And that's going to open up this more advanced profile management tool. Now, keep in mind that this more advanced profile management tool is only available for those profiles that you've created yourself. Uh, so this isn't something that you can do for the profiles that come with Adobe. But what we can do is we can go in here now and we can change the name. We can change the set. As I mentioned earlier, you can actually have access to changing these sets. I can also create a cluster. And what's interesting about this cluster is that the cluster gives you the chance to be able to go in and select and create a group of different profiles. So let's say that you want to make your own different sets of profiles. You want to make your own set of landscape profiles, your own set of portrait profiles, your own set of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can create a cluster which won't show up anywhere, but it will help to organize these different profiles together. So I can just put in here like Josh's profiles, and that means that any of the profiles uh, and sets will all be clustered together. So, and, and I'll show you what that means in a second because, uh, yeah, it, it'll it'll start making sense in a moment. Uh, the next part, the short name, this gives you a chance to be able to go in and, and create a, a shorter version of it. So, for example, if I wanted to go JCP one, which is Josh's crazy profile version one, and let's just I'll click on that really quickly and I open this up again, you'll notice now the short name, JCP1, is in there. If I roll over it, you'll see the full name or the long name, Josh's Crazy Profile, V1. And so this gives you a chance for like when, when showing up on phones and other kinds of devices. And yes, we are working very, very hard and dil diligently to get these profiles to be able to sync with your mobile devices. And that's part of the reason why we've created this short name so that you have a chance of being able to make sure it fits on small devices. Uh, time coming soon, TBD, ETA, soon. <laughs> uh, but you can see now that I've got this, this other thing. So now I'm going to go back in here holding the alt or option key down, click on rename profile. And I can go in here and I can say, you know, what's the next one? Sort name. The sort name, uh, while it sounds similar to the short name, it's different. It's going to be how do you want to sort these things? So for example, let's say I have Josh's crazy profile v1, but let's, let's just rename this thing to teal skies. Um, and let's say that uh, I make that one and I actually want teal skies and I know that I'm going to be making another one called, I don't know, let's say uh, dark skies. And I want teal skies to show up before dark skies. 
I can actually put anything in here and this is going to override the alphabetical sorting that goes on inside of the profile browser. So if I put in here one, for example, that means that it's gonna be above two if I put two for the other one. And that means instead of using the name as a way of deciding what to use to sort this, it's gonna use the sort name because it's gonna override the organization. The next thing in the description, uh, this is a chance for you to go in here and, and either to remind yourself or your customers what it's doing. And it takes uh, sky blues and makes them teal. Now I, I notice I would say turquoise, but every time I try and type turquoise, I misspell it. I've never been good at spelling, so I'm just going to use the word teal, even though I mean turquoise, but that's okay. Uh, the copyright, this is a chance for you to go in here and just type in your name, for example. Uh, you can put your contact information in there, uh, you know, like you go joshhaptel.com, for example, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Now, um, these things will just show up if, the, if you or your customer right clicks on a profile, it says show information, that all this information will show up inside of there. Uh, so it's a chance to, to get more information in there and, and help people out because especially if you're making really, really complex profiles, um, people might not understand exactly what you've done to them and you want to be able to showcase, hey, I've done this thing and that thing and the next thing or this is the kind of image that this is useful for. Um, for those folks out there who uh, were complaining about the fact that uh, I didn't name the profiles inside of the creative profiles more understandably, that's because it's actually my personal philosophy that I never want to color somebody's uh, creative juices by saying this profile is for blank purposes. I'd rather people name it themselves. That's also why I never name my photos. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't agree with that, that's great. When you make your profiles, you can name them. Uh, I don't name my profiles. That just happens to be what I do when I'm making profiles for other people. Um, but of course, this profile for description purposes, just call it Teal Skies. We don't have to get uh, too philosophical about this, which is great. Uh, next one, model. Um, do we want it to be only for A7R3s, which is this camera was? No, uh, let's just make it for images from all models and formats. Now, if I had selected images with Adobe Standard Profile, what that means is the only for images that have a compatible Adobe Standard Profile. Adobe Standard is a raw profile, which means therefore it would only work for raw files. I don't want it to not work for JPEGs or TIFFs, so I will select images from all models and formats. Next one, limit to non-raw or raw and non-raw, so both of them. Uh, limit to color images. Now, this one's interesting. Um, because this is being used by creating a LUT, that means that the LUT is uh, requiring color information. So this, this doesn't mean whether or not it's gonna work on when you convert to black and white, which it won't, but also what it means is if you open up your file, like a raw file from a monochrome image, uh, like that fancy new $100,000 12 megapixel, nine inch by 11 inch camera that's got my head going boom, uh, which is only capturing a monochrome, those images wouldn't work because there's no color information. So I'll select limit to color images, that's great. Uh, and then next one, lim range, um, do you want raw files? I'm sorry, <laughs> you want normal and dynamic marine images, meaning if you opened up an HDR image, like you use the uh, merge to HDR and you create a DNG HDR file, should that image also work or not? And I would say, sure, why not? So we can leave that on. And so now I click OK. And now I got this one. Now, I, I, as I mentioned before, I wanted to show you how those clusters work. So let's close this out. And let me go back over here and let me create, um, actually, first of all, I'm going to just reset this back to Adobe Color. That looks great. And now I'm going to actually show you, uh, let's see if I go in here and I make, uh, take the highlights and I take the whites and I even go into the curves and I, oops, I go into the point curves, all right? And I make that one, there we go. Yeah, nice little crossover. You like that? That looks good, okay. Perfect. All right, so now, um, for whatever reason, I'm gonna make this really silly looking profile. Uh, it's gonna do these things that I've just shown inside of here. Um, so it's gonna copy all of these elements in here and I'm gonna say, uh, go into this one, I'm gonna select option, new preset, and this time I'm gonna say new set and I'm gonna call it Josh's bad profiles because these are bad ones. And I'm gonna be like, why? Okay, and I'm gonna select this time basic and point curve, uh, I'm gonna turn off the look table. I'm not going to set a lookup table because again, you can make these profiles with or without a lookup table. Anything's fine. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back over here. Uh, let me just reset all these things back to there they were. Go back into my curve. Get rid of this guy. Nope. Get rid of that guy. Nope. All right, cool. 
So now I'm back to where I started from. Uh, and I go back to here. And now you see I've got my profiles. I got Josh's bad profiles. I open this thing up and boom. Why? Why am I doing that to my images? I don't know. Um, but let me see here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to hold the option click key down. Click rename profile. And this time I'm going to say uh, cluster. Oh, actually, I've already forgotten what I named this cluster. So let's go back over here. Right click. Uh, rename profile. If I copy this here, boom, out of that one, go back down over here, option, right click, rename profile, paste there, and yeah, so go back in here again. All images, raw and not raw images, looks great, click OK, boom. So now you can see that there's like this line that separates these two out here. So if I make another one, just, just to give you an idea, pretending like I had uh, somebody else's profiles inside of here. So new profile set, I'm going to call them someone else's. Okay, okay. And it, this stuff actually at this point doesn't really matter. That's fine. Okay, uh, go back over here, go back into this guy, boom. So now you can see all the stuff that we're in a cluster are showing up together. So these are all, like as I mentioned, that Josh's cluster, that uh, one that I showed you that I was creating, it doesn't show up anywhere in the UI, but at least it helps you keep these together. So if you want to create a bunch of these things, and again, this is really helpful if you're going to be creating these and selling them to other people, or if you just want to keep track of them, or you want to have them organized, this just helps out quite a lot. Uh, and of course, someone else's is down here, and this is this one, and there's that one. So I got all these different profiles, and again, I can play around with the amount and I can really, oof, that looks horrible. <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of fun uh, that you can do. And really, the, the magic of these profiles comes into your ability to come up with some ideas, create lookup tables. And again, I, I uh, recommend that you go out, do some searching on lookup table creation tools. Like I mentioned, there's a bunch of different tools out there that can create LUTs. Um, maybe uh, I'll create a, a video on LUT creation later on if, if there's enough interest. But the idea really is uh, play around with these things, come up with your own effects, create profiles, and then you can apply them to your images. And then, of course, you can also go in there and you can say uh, this profile with these kinds of adjustments. Um, boop, doo, 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 there we go. And now I can go in here and, and without holding the option key down, I can create a new preset. And as long as this uh, treatment and profile effect uh, is selected, um, it will actually include that profile that I just selected. So that means if I create a preset uh, and I make sure that this treatment and profile checkbox is selected, that means that the preset will reference that profile. So now I can make presets that also reference profile. So all these things are possible. It's a, a lot of things that you can do with profiles. They're really, really super powerful. And that's why we wanted to make sure that everybody had access to them. So uh, again, check out the SDK information that I'll put into the uh, YouTube page with a description. And then uh, let us know if you have any questions. I'll, you, I usually check out and read through all the comments on the page. Uh, you can reach us, of course, all the normal ways. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, thanks a lot and hope you have fun.